Hello and welcome everybody, King Dems here. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Vitality and Astralis merger um, because that is basically what this is. We've seen two from the old Astralis core, the core that won four majors and was the most successful core we've ever seen in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, have linked up with Apex, Zewu and Misuta to form basically what is a super team um i think that's probably a pretty fair way to put it obviously let's not forget zonic the most successful coach in counter-strike global offensive is also part of this move now when analyzing any move in counter-strike global offensive or to be honest in any sport or esport i think the first thing you've got to do is you've got to look at the problems that existed in the previous iteration of the team and then look and see if the moves have kind of solved any of these problems, what they've done, how they interact with the issues that existed before. Now, vitality is most obvious issue, and it's not something that I'm going to have particular joy in bringing up or harping on about because everybody knows what the most obvious issue in vitality was, and that was Kyojin. Um, Kyojin was a real problem for vitality throughout his whole time on the team. Obviously, everybody knows his issues on Nuke uh, being the anchor on the A site on CT side. Uh, it was very well publicized and something even Apex spoke about in an interview openly and said that the team were well aware that the Kyojin wasn't good enough in that role. But I think the final or one of the final games that Vitality played with Kyojin is a really, really good example of how much of an issue he really was for them. So the game I am referring to is from the Blast Premier World Final. This is the upper bracket final between Gambit and Vitality. Obviously, as you can see, and as you probably remember, Vitality lost that game 0-2 on Vertigo and Dust 2. It was a relatively close series, however. On a different day, it might have gone a different way. But if we just have a look here on the scoreboard, obviously Kyojin by far the worst rated player on the server. That is not surprising but it's also the manner in which he played that was a particular issue. Now, first off, we had Vertigo. Six frags is just not good enough. He had virtually zero impact on this map in any way, shape or form. On the CT side, he was really struggling on the B side, particularly to deal with the Axile Lurks. And on the T side, he just basically didn't get any damage down. Um, it's just not good enough to frag like this in a game. Even an IGL, like a, let's say, God B type player, you can't drop six frags on a map regularly. That's just not good enough. Moving on to Dust2, obviously he was ever so slightly better. Um, I say ever so slightly, he was quite a bit better, but only because of the very low bar set on Vertigo. Even playing better than Masuta in terms of a raw statistical sense. Um... The problem is, when you look at these numbers, Misuta actually had much better ADR, which is obviously a massive boon, and I don't know, I'm not quite sure why the rating kind of favours Kyojin there. I'm not sure four more kills and less deaths is enough to justify that level of ADR, but the way Kyojin was playing, particularly on the CT side of this map, he was the dedicated long player, and Vitality were consistently being abused by Gambit, in that long position i.e specifically kyojin and four or five times on that ct side alone vitality switched up the long hold to try and protect kyojin and to stop him getting exposed so much to the point where they actually dropped kyojin back all the way to the site and just gave up long control completely from the start of the round the fact that vitality's whole ct side basically had to work around kyojin being such a big issue is a large portion of the reason they lost this game and yeah we all know that kyojin wasn't good enough but this game one of the last he played under the vitality banner really did emphasize quite how much of a problem that he was kyojin was the major problem on vitality and it was difficult to analyze much else about the issues within that vitality lineup because of how much of a problem kyojin was he was probably almost painting over some of the other cracks because it was really hard to identify them with kyojin on the lineup so we'll just move on to the upside now of bringing in dupree and megisk obviously we're bringing in proven winners here Zonic, Dupree, and Magisk have all been there and done that, all won multiple majors, many, many other tournaments. I've just got Dupree's page up here just as an example. Like, just look at this. Like, this is outrageous. Four times major winner, won a multitude of other trophies, been in the top 20 players of the year, 
most of the years he's been a pro player. The pedigree of these players and the coach of Zonic cannot be understated. And that is a huge upgrade on Kyojin and Shox combined. Obviously, Shox has a lot of pedigree himself, but combining Kyojin and Shox and looking at Dupree and Magus as a swap of two for two on the player front, obviously, it's a massive upgrade. You would also have to think that overall, Dupree and Magus is going to be a firepower upgrade in terms of raw numbers on Kyojin and Shox. Kyojin, we know he was a big issue in that front. Shox was not the player that he has been in his career. I think he was rated 1.03 for the year, which is his lowest rating as a pro player to date across a calendar year. He was still quite good in the clutch. There were a lot of tournaments where he was towards the top in terms of 1VXs. And in that Blast Premier final, the global final, I can remember two different instances where him and Ziwu pulled off like 4v2, 5v2 clutches. So Shox definitely still had an element of impact to his game. But he was doing that thing Shox likes to do where he picks up the orb, doesn't have a huge amount of impact with it, kind of wastes a really expensive gun. I don't think losing Shox was particularly a bad thing. And getting Dupree and Magisk in is definitely overall an upgrade on the two players of Shox and Kyojin. I don't think that's up for debate. Now, there are a couple of question marks that definitely come with this move. Questions that are not going to be answered, quite frankly, until we see the lineup have three, six months of play under their belts. The first and most obvious and the one that everybody is going to be referencing and thinking about is the language barrier. None of these players, apart from Magus, for a very brief period in his career, have ever tried to play on an international lineup and have ever tried to play communicating in English. This cannot be understated as to how much of an issue this potentially could be. Trying to play for the very first time not in your native language is going to be a big change. I think from what we've seen, the English in general is pretty decent across these five players. Six, if you want to include the coach of Zonic. I think we've seen interviews from all of them. Zewa is probably the person we've seen speak English the least. And I still think as far as we can tell, as he started to do some more interviews towards the back end of the year, his English is definitely decent and passable. However, having decent conversational English versus communicating in tense situations, under pressure, trying to communicate a lot of information in as few words as possible, that is a completely different prospect. And I think a lot of people who are basically expecting this lineup to be amazing from the off are really underestimating the language barrier aspect. It is definitely going to be a problem and a question that Vitality are going to have to answer. And I have no doubt that in this period during the player break, they are going to be working on that language issue. The other question mark for me, and this might seem like a strange one, is the swap of Zonic for Xtaz. You are essentially taking the two clear best coaches in the world as far as I'm concerned. I don't think anybody can get close in terms of what they have done with what was put in front of them. These are the two clear best coaches in the world and you're swapping them out for each other. It to me, I've got to be perfectly honest, it seems like a sideways move. I know that Zonic has a lot more trophies and a lot more tangible success under his belt, but Zonic was also working with the best five-man lineup that Counter-Strike Global Offensive has ever seen. It's difficult to know exactly how much credit to give Zonic for Astralis' success. I think you do have to apportion a fair bit of the credit to him. I'm not saying he doesn't do anything, but... Let's put it this way, remove Zonic from Astralis, do I still think that they were going to be an incredibly good team over the period that they were dominant? Yes, I really do. If you take Xtaz away from some of these Vitality lineups that he's coached, I don't think they're anywhere near as good as they ended up being with him as the coach and at the helm. And so I almost have more to go on to say Xtaz is an amazing coach than I do Zonic. Don't get me wrong, still think Zonic is one of the clear best coaches in the world, as with x -Taz. But what I'm trying to say here is I don't see this as a clear upgrade. I see this as a sideways move. I see this as potentially Dupree, Magus, and Zonic came as a package deal. And so there was not really any option to say we don't want Zonic, we'll keep x -Taz. But basically, I think there's a question mark about whether that's actually an upgrade, Zonic for x -Taz. I think it's a sideways move. I think it's a bit of a like for like. Just my honest opinion.
Now, the final question mark, I think, that is going to surround this roster, and again, I think it's an important one, is that of a culture clash. I think it's fair to say that the average French person and the average Danish person come from a very different cultural background. I think France and French players in particular have historically always stayed within the French scene. The only player I can think of being an exception to that was Kiyoshima. Obviously, he played on that phase lineup, played on Cloud9, played for a few different international lineups. Other than that, I can't think in CSGO in particular of an example of a French player going and playing for good international lineups. They have historically always stuck within their own scene, and I think culture has played a big part in that. I think there is no guarantee that there won't be some sort of friction culturally between these players. I think Ziwu and Masuta particularly seem fairly laid back and potentially they're the people I have the least concern over. If anybody, it's actually Apex, who seems like a very emotional guy, and it seemed like a sense of closeness and a sense of camaraderie was particularly important for him. Look how emotionally he got when they won that Blast Fall final towards the end of the year, how important it was for him to win a trophy with that group of five players. I think there's absolutely no guarantee here that there won't be some sort of cultural friction. And again, that's another problem that they have to overcome. Summarizing my thoughts about this five-man lineup, I think it has to be an upgrade for Vitality in terms of raw CSGO fronted thinking. If we just look at five players on a server, yes, this looks like an upgrade. And so on the one hand, it almost seems that I can't expect them to be any worse and they should be up there challenging for titles. The problem is, is I think the introduction of a Danish-French mix introduces some problems that weren't there previously, or the potential, I should say, for some problems that weren't there previously. And so I'm not sold that this will be a certain surefire success from the off. I think if anything, we might need to see a bit of a settling in period. I expect them to be good from the get go. The five players here are too good and too experienced to not be decent, at least from the get go. But I'm not convinced this is going to be a hit off the bat. And I am not convinced that this lineup will ever be able to challenge Na'Vi if Na'Vi stay in the form they are in currently. I'm going to give this one like a sideways thumb in terms of a move. I think on the CSGO front, just on the server, it looks like an upgrade. Behind the scenes, I think there could be some problems. So this is a wait and see as far as I'm concerned. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, you know the drill. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe, tell your grandmother all about me. And if you didn't, get out of here.